All right, today we're gonna take a look at this full system. So we're gonna go through a full system overview of what we've got going on over here with the tank and the absorption system a little further away. But first, let's start with this little fellow right over here. This is what we're gonna refer to as a snake line or a clean out. This is so that if you ever get a clog between the pipe to the tank, you have a way of dislodging that clog through here without opening up the sewer access in the house. Super important, you'll find this mostly in our area on houses after 1982. Uh, sometimes they'll be buried, most of the time they'll be up in the air just like this. So the sewer pipe will run all the way to our two chamber septic system. We have two chambers in here so that we can clarify the liquids, right? So this is our first chamber right here. And we can see that there's a nice fatty scum layer on top, but we can also see signs of previous backups. If we take a look on the inside of the tank, we'll see the baffle in this first chamber, which is gonna be just like this. That is the inside of the front chamber. The goal of a two chamber tank is to clarify the liquids so that way less debris works its way into the drain fields, ultimately extending the life of the system. The front chamber should always have the majority of your solids going into it. The back chamber should have the little bit of residual that comes out, and then that should keep most of the debris from going into the drain field. As we can see here, the scum layer is far more aggressive than the scum layer back here. That means that the wall baffle in the middle of this first chamber is working and doing its job. We can see that there's grease as well as a pretty thick scum layer in this, in this chamber. This purple or pinkish stuff right here, that's usually a telltale sign that somebody's been putting grease down here if you drain. A normal septic system can handle a little bit of grease, but you should not make it a practice of putting a lot of grease through your drains as it will cause clogs and it's really difficult to remove from the tank. You can see that on the walls of the tank, there's a nice thick layer of film on both the front and back chamber walls. Now, the back chamber is gonna be an identical version of the front chamber, except for it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So for this particular tank, we've got a thousand gallons of capacity up front, 500 gallons in the back. This little fella right here, that white pipe, that's called a back baffle. That baffle's job is to keep all that floating debris from getting into the outlet line and causing a clog. If you see the white little debris right there in the put in those water, You'll see that as it floats up towards the outlet line, it cannot go past, meaning it will not clog the drain line. This particular tank has something called an effluent filter. This little device actually slides into that baffle and it will catch most of the debris that works its way into the drain field. Now, remember earlier, I said that these little rings are signs that it's previously backed up. Well, if you're putting a lot of grease into your sewer system and you have an effluent filter, this bad boy is gonna clog up and it's gonna cause a backup in your system. The filter is doing its job by preventing the debris from getting into the drain field. However, you run the risk of sewage water going back into your home. So whenever you have these, super important to make sure that you clean them at least once a year, super important to make sure that you're not putting in any kind of debris or any kind of solids that can potentially be really fine for particles to capture or get stuck inside of this filter. From there, all the water into the tank will go into the drain field line. The drain field line at this particular property will be about two feet wide, six feet deep, and it'll run for about 50 foot total length. Here, they're gonna backfill it with number two limestone and a perforated pipe. The perforation is in the pipe, just allow it to where as the water goes in, it's able to work its way out of the pipe into the stone and into the surrounding soil. The stone's just there to open up the soil so that way the water's got somewhere to go. Right now what we're doing is we're running a little bit of water to make sure that nothing's bubbling up, the stone's not getting oversaturated, and nothing's backing up towards the house. We wanna do that test anytime you do an inspection to make sure that everything's properly draining. And so that way I can rule out the drain field as the cause for that staining on the, on the tank. So because we've put almost 300 gallons of water through the drain field, we know that this is probably what caused the backup uh, to happen in the past. So just make sure you clean them out, get your tanks checked every few years, pump out your tank every two or three years, and just make sure that you're keeping on top of it so that way you don't have any kind of backups inside your home.